coming up on The Sporting Chef. Today on the show, we're gonna have pizza, goose gizzards, the hot honey tip, salmon, less is more, and swamp dip. What do you get when you find the best fish in game chefs? Cookbook authors, award winners, fishmongers, outdoor experts, and put them on the fastest half hour on outdoor television. Hosted by one of America's best known wild game chefs, Scott Lacey, The Sporting Chef. Brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Hey, I'm Scott Lacey, The Sporting Chef, and guess what? I was in Alabama and I talked to my good friend Stacy Harris and she yeah. says, why don't you come on by and we're gonna make a pizza. Yes. So I here we are. Uh, Stacy, um, I, I, I told her, let's just make this pizza. <laughs> you tell me what to do and we won't pretend that we know what we're talking about, but go ahead. What am I doing first? All right, first I have about six cups of flour mm -hmm. and I'm gonna want you to put this yeast packet yes. in to just right on top of this okay. right here. Gotcha. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a spoon and I am going to put a couple of pinches of salt. Did you say as pinches well. of salt? Pinches of salt. And how does, is that, well, is that any different than a pinch of salt? <laughs> <laughs> or like oil, we say oil. How oil. do you say oil? I say oil. Okay, you I thought say, you might. You use the yeah, other one. Ours is correct. Just, just, I got it. Just so you know. Hey, my roots are here. Oh yeah. All right. Well, then how do you learn? How did you learn to speak so? I, I broke away. I, uh, I was able to break out. Break away. Okay. Now I, I put sugar in here, by the way, right. and I put a little bit of salt. And now we're going to add a little bit of water, and it's probably going to take right around two cups of water. But I'd rather it be more sticky than dry. So, Do you want to mix it up a little bit first? You want me to I keep think pouring? So. No, okay. I'm going to go ahead and mix it a little bit. All right. But you don't want to over mix it because then it'll get too tough for you. Then we're going to let this rest for about 30 minutes while we make all the rest of the yummy ingredients. And is this one of your um, famous ingredients from your cookbook? I mean, is this, this is this a is, recipe that you have? Well, I have. we're adapting it today because we're going to put um, some venison sausage cool. on the top of it. And in the recipe from uh, Recipes and Tips for Sustainable Living, I use quail. Excellent. I've got one question for you while we're going to finish mm -hmm. up this dough here. Mm -hmm. Do you eat goose gizzards a lot? Do they? Do the, <laughs> does the Harris family load up on goose gizzards when you, know, you get hungry? We've never had that, but we have had rattlesnake. Right. And um, a couple of other little things like that, but never goose gizzards. Well, you know who cooks goose gizzards, don't I'm you? sure Hank Shaw. Hank Shaw cooks yeah. goose gizzards. It's a total shame what some people will toss out. I mean, after all, who doesn't like giblet gravy? I keep all the giblets from all the waterfowl I keep, and one of my favorites is the gizzard. You'll notice that this is labeled and dated. It's important to know how old that anything in your freezer is, no matter what it is. A gizzard is two pieces of meat separated by a grinding plate that has all kinds of gravel and rocks and, and all kinds of just icky stuff that you just want to get out. Here's how you do it. There's a line in between the two pieces of meat, and you take your knife and just open it. You don't cut all the way through. And what I do is I clean it in a bowl of water. And the good thing about a frozen gizzard is a lot of the stuff will just come right off as a block. Rinse it. You don't want this in your pipes. Cut it in half. Then you want to trim the outside. This part here. Now you need to take off the grinder plates peel them off like that. This is silver skin. Silver skin is the enemy. Take your knife underneath here and slide up just like that. And come down to pull it off. Now it's starting to look like meat. It pulls right off. Once you get it going, trim it. Give it another rinse. So how do you cook it? You've got these nice pieces of meat, but I like to put them in a crock pot or some kind of a slow cooker with stock, a little bit of duck fat or butter is good, vegetables or whatever, and then just cook them slow and low. I mean, 12 hours is not too much. So stop throwing your gizzards away. They're really good meat. You can put them in the slow cooker or you can make giblet gravy out of them. Just whatever you do, don't throw them in the trash. 
Okay, you did all the hard work here. You made a mess, right? Yeah, big mess. And yeah. this is and this is the dough you covered up with a towel. What's the deal? I put a little flour on the top. Right. And I put a wet towel, just a moist towel, and we're, we we put it in a non-drafty spot, a warm non-drafty spot. Let it do its thing, and it's going to rise even probably a little bit more, and then we're going to have a great crust. Now I'm going to brown this venison sausage. At least yeah. in theory, I'll pretend I'm actually doing something. <laughs> but meanwhile, I want you to. Check Check out this tip on how to save room in your freezer. Okay, good. Do you freeze it this way or do you just have big clumps of stuff? What do you got? No, I do it like I think you're going to tell people to do it. So Excellent. we're going to see. Very cool. Okay. So when you're packing stuff into your freezer, and you've got objects like this, you'll find that when you open the freezer door very often, everything kind of slides out. But what I like to do is freeze things flat. So if I've got soups or stews or sauces, so I'll freeze it in a zipper lock bag or in a plastic container so that it's relatively thin and flat. And then I'm gonna transfer it to a food saver bag and pop it into my Game Saver Bronze and give it a squeeze. Can you imagine how much better flat items are going to fit into your freezer? You can actually put them into your freezer and stack them like a bookcase. And that way, whenever you need a sauce or a soup, you just grab it out of the bookcase. And this is gonna save a whole lot of room in your freezer. Coming up next, salmon. Melissa Bachman has a hog hunting tip. John McGannon and Buddy. Y'all stay tuned. Welcome back to The Sporting Shop. I'm Scott Layseth. Of course, this is Stacy Harris, and I'm um, at your disposal. Stacy's showing me how she makes pizza, and I'm kind of working a little All bit. All right, you're working a lot. Not really. Yeah, I need you to caramelize the onions, if you don't mind. Okay, we got heat over uh, there? We have heat, Okay. and a little bit of olive oil, and I like to put, or actually my daughter likes to put a little bit of sugar in with the onions to help to caramelize those. Right. So tell me, you were, we were talking about caramelization earlier. In the old days, we would call, when we said we were going to brown something, well, browning would be 
just putting a little color on the outside. Right. Caramelization yeah. actually brings out the sugars, the natural sugars from these. It but makes it taste so much different. It does. Know, than, a, than raw or sweating. It does. It does it, it's a lot different. There you go. I like that. Fancy. We'll just fancy give that a toss. Work. What are you doing over here? Okay. I'm going to put my tomatoes in. Those aren't store bought no, tomatoes, are they? They came right out of the garden. And I'm going to put a little bit of citrus in. So you're making tomato, you're making the I'm pizza making the sauce. sauce. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And we've got to let it reduce so it's good to get going on this as fast as you can. I'm putting a little bit of the thyme. And actually I use a lot of thyme. I love thyme. I love rosemary. I'm putting that in here. I'm going to put the garlic in and I am going to go ahead and let that simmer. So what's going to make this pizza sauce thick? What thickens this up? Well, Are you, is it just reducing it or what you got? The lemon does help reduce, I mean help thicken the uh -huh. sauce, but just letting it go, just letting it reduce by like a third or even two thirds. You're going to concentrate the flavors as the liquid reduces and you're going to cook mm -hmm. a lot of that water right. out. And I'll tell you, there's a gal who knows a lot about how to prepare fish and game. And that's Tiffany Haugen. And coming up next, she cooks salmon with a Camp Chef pellet grill and smoker. That sounds great. Oh, it's good. Hey, Scott, I've got a recipe for you out of my book, Smoking Salmon and Steelhead. We're going to be smoking it up in the Camp Chef pellet grill. The first step was to cut the fish to the desired sizes. And since this was a wet brine, I started with water, added two parts sugar and one part salt, and the flavorings are garlic, onion, and pepper. We submerged those fish, covered it with plastic wrap, and put it in the refrigerator overnight. So this morning, I took the fish out, patted them dry, and added a little more pepper for flavor. I let those sit for about an hour at room temperature so a pellicle will form. And that just means making them dry to the touch to kind of seal those flavors in. The only precaution you want to take when loading your smoker is to just make sure none of the pieces of fish are touching each other. If you've got a long smoke ahead of you, you want to make sure and empty the ash container. This is a great feature on this stove as it's simple to do and wow, that is how much ash has been produced and we've used this grill five or six times. So if you look at that, over half a bag of pellets, and this is all the waste from that. So that shows how efficiently these pellets burn and how great this unit is. Camp Chef has a lot of great pellet flavors. My favorite for fish is the classic alder. This smoker is easy to use. Power on and set to low smoke. Once the smoker has reached that magical 180 degree point, the hot smoking process begins. How long is this going to take? With all the seminars I do across the country, that is one of the most frequently asked questions. And I'm sorry to say, I don't have an exact answer. The key here is getting to know your smoker and getting to know how it performs in different weather conditions. And also it comes to taste preference. It looks like we've got a nice even heat in this smoker and all of them are smoking evenly no hot spots, and so we don't need to change any of them around. Well, it's been a little over four hours. It's a nice day, so this fish smoked up pretty quickly. I think we're ready to plate. As you've seen, smoking fish is a fairly simple process. So any high fat fish will smoke up very nicely. And some of these, as you can see, the skin is staying on. Others, the skin is a little bit stuck to the grates, but that's all right. We're gonna remove that skin anyway, and we'll come back and clean this smoker up. Smoked salmon and steelhead, a family favorite with a recipe we've been using for generations. Get yourself one of these Camp Chef pellet smokers and find out just how easy it is. Back to you, Scott. All right, I'm gonna let you do the dirty work. Just like pour that out. Deal yes, here? sir. This isn't a setup, is it? No. Hey, and it's good that, to have it a little bit less firm than it is to have it totally firm and, and not have to add any flour to it because right. you don't want it to be too dry. Let's go ahead and cut that okay. in half. 
And my biggest thing that I want to tell people, don't be afraid to try to make your homemade crust. Anybody can make this and it's really inexpensive. It's just flour, salt, and yeast. That's in a little bit of water. And um, that's really all there is to it. So, and if it gets a little sticky like I just did yeah. there, you just put a little bit more flour on it. Right. Don't you find that when you make the homemade crust, it's like so much better? Like I think it tastes better and you can also play around with it and add your own flavors to it. Right. You can put roasted garlic in here. You can. Oh, some yeah. people put a little bit of sugar in there too mm -hmm. when they're doing the, when they're making the, the dough. Right. But no, this is a no brainer. Yeah, it's so good. And we're gonna make it really thin so that it's nice and crunchy. And we've got our meatballs ready. And that looks like it's about ready to go onto the stone. Under the stone, you all right. Try it? You wanna put that on? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, while I'm doing that. Okay. Next up, it's Melissa Bachman with a hog hunting tip. When it comes to bow hunting, silence is golden. And that's not just for you as a hunter, but it's also for your bow. Now, number one, you wanna have a quiet bow. And I like all Matthews bows for their quietness. They are very, very good. And this Matthews Jewel, well, it's been great. But any bow can be optimized by adding a few extra accessories. First off, I put a dead end string stop on all my bows. It really helps out with noise. Next, I make sure they have string suppressors and monkey tails. This will make sure that you have the quietest bow possible. Now the reason why you need it quiet, well I'm here hunting in Africa and these animals are spooky. They're coming into water and well let's face it, everything attacks in that water so they are at the absolute most alert that they could ever be. So you want to make sure you've got a quiet bow, that way they're not ducking the string and heading out before you can make a good shot. So by having a quiet bow, well not only will it help you in Africa, but it can help you on every single hunt you have. Stay with us, we're making pizza. John McGannon's got a great tip. Buddy's got swamp dip. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef. Scott Laysath, my good friend Stacy Harris, is showing me how she makes her 
wild game pizza. Yeah, What's I'm learning next? a few tips. We've got this all put on. I put a little semolina flour right. on the pan, and then the hot stone, it was already hot, came right. out of the oven, and your wonderful dough is going to be fantastic. <laughs> so and and that's reduced a quite a bit from what you, you had that's two right. jars of your homemade um, tomatoes that yes. you would put up. Yes, and so it's got the garlic and the lemon juice, and I like to also put a little lime juice. Um, in there sometimes and it's got the thyme and rosemary but you can use anything you want to you can use spices that you you know might have on hand and that lime juice will give it kind of a little edge to it it gives it a kind mm -hmm. of a high note right, right it does if you use a store-bought pizza sauce it's usually really sweet and it has a lot of sugar in it and I'm just not a big fan of sweet sauces. I'm not either. I like, I like the lime. I'm not it. either. Cornbread the same way. Right. This again is, this is the venison, right? Right. Venison this sausage. Venison. That's right. Okay. These caramelized onions turned out great, Scott. You did a good job. I, uh, well, yeah, I think you did most mm, of the work. I don't but. think so. All right. What do I have here? That's Gouda. Gouda cheese. Yes. It melts really, really great. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to put Parmesan. And the kicker on this recipe is the goat cheese. Now, I know a lot of people don't like goat cheese. How come? Well, it's got a really, really sharp, strong flavor. and But I'm going to use this whole entire thing on this. But it makes this dish so good. Y'all, if you haven't tried it, you've just got to. No, you don't happen to have goats here at the at the Harris Ranch, do My you? My husband wants them, but if we got them, your who husband is wants come your husband wants at least two of everything. I think. Yeah, this he is does. going to be the Harris Ark. He does. Yes, cows, everything. Right. But you know, if you go on vacation, if you think practically, who's going to come over? You say, you know, take the mail in, goat, you know, milk the goats. Right. You know, and and I'm not sure how that how well that would go. You're gonna you're gonna put all that on no, there. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I changed my mind. I think that might have been but just. A little bit oil, overkill. But this is my favorite cheese. I got you. Know? you. Yes. Now, can you put this in the oven? Sure. Okay. Is that hot? Uh, yes, it is. Let's see. Man, yeah, it's a little hot. I got it. Okay. How hot's the oven? All right. It is at 400 degrees. Okay. Okay. Middle rack. We're going to come out with the best pizza ever. And while the pizza does what it does, I want you to check out John McGannon, who's got a tip that he calls addition by subtraction. It's interesting. Find out what that means. Okay, that's right, Scott. Thanks. We have some terrific ground venison, and it doesn't get any more organic, free-range, natural, and lean than, than this wild game meat. And what we've done is we've allowed it to drain out and get removed all of that capillary blood. A lot of people think that you have to add something to your ground venison or your ground moose or your ground elk. You don't need to add, you need to subtract some. So by subtracting the excessive amount of capillary blood that is found inside of this meat, it will stick together. Plus, you'll be taking advantage of, the, of its lean nature and, and by adjusting the cooking process, through a high heat on something like a black iron skillet, which is my favorite utensil, is that will sear that meat in and cook it really fast so it doesn't have a chance to dry out. So you need to subtract in order to get addition with wild game ground meat. Word on the street is that the pizza is ready. It's ready. You're Correct. ready to get it out? Yeah, I got it. All right. There you go. That looks scrumptious. You know, I like this. You know what I like about it the most? It's right. really, really crusty. Yes. I like a good crusty pizza crust. Yes. You know what else is crusty? What's that? Oh, I bet I know. I bet Come I know. On. It's Buddy, uh -huh. and he's got swamp dip waiting for us. That's crusty <laughs> on steroids. <laughs> well, here we are in the kohlrabi patch. Going to be doing a little something special with some dipping sauce for it. This is how we're going to put this together. This is some of them dried up herbs. I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. You see, we don't measure things real close. Got some of that high mountain garlic seasoning. A little bit of this bayou bass. We're going to reconstitute everything with this vinegar. Stir that up a little bit. That's the fastest rehydrating you're ever gonna see. About 30 seconds is all you need. I'm gonna put us some sour cream in there. Well, we got some mayo here, and we got some Miracle Whip. I'm gonna put about a third of each of those in there. 
it needs some sweetness. It's some of that sylvia. It's like a ranch dip kind of thickness. Experiment around with some of them exotic vegetables. Make yourself up some dip like that. And of course, the interesting thing is the name of it. Swamp Dip. It's Buddy T. And that's all I gotta say about that. We're not done. More Sporting Chef from my neck of the woods in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back to The Sporting Chef, Scott Laysath, Stacy Harris, and this is your neck of the woods. This is your pizza, and you've got some fresh parsley you're gonna put on there. Yes, we do. It All smells right. like incredible. Of One of the things that I don't do on my own show is I don't eat my own food. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. I find that so kind of annoying when people, have you ever seen anybody on TV bite into their own food and not say, mm. oh, that is so delicious. Yeah. yeah. I know. So I don't do that. <laughs> Who's not going to do that, you know? But I'll eat yours. And before okay. I take a bite with a mouthful, That's right. who do we have to thank for today's program? We had Tiffany Haugen. Yes, Melissa Bachman. Yes. Uh, Buddy. <laughs> Buddy, <laughs> uh, John McGannon. And Hank Shaw. Hank Shaw, and of course, Stacey. Stacey Harris, big, big, big thank you. I'm oh, Scott Lacey, the Sporting Chef, and you yep. can see Stacy all the time on the Sporting Chef. Don't forget to go to your website, which Game is gamingarden.com. Gamingarden.com, sportingchef.com. Thanks to all of our sponsors, and we hope to see you next week. Is that so hot you're about to die? Mm -mm. <laughs> That's really good.